Okay, so, Larry, um, just want to go ahead and obviously say thank you for coming down. We appreciate you taking uh, time out to have an interview with us. Um, I'm sure you're very, very busy today, so your time is obviously um, appreciated. Also, firstly, I just wanted to ask then, so regarding today and yourself, how have you been? Is there anything interesting that you've been up to today at all? Just before we do get into like the questions there. Uh, yeah, we've been doing good. Uh, the entire department's been doing good. We uh, uh, Obviously, as you guys know, we handle anything that comes along up north. We handle all highways throughout the entirety of uh, the state of San Andreas. Um, but when it comes to stuff from today, it's it's been a relatively quiet day, actually. It hasn't been... Uh, anything crazy so far? Uh, I'm sure that's yet to come, though, as as per usual. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully it's still a great day for you, though. Um, but, yeah, that's good to know. It's good to know that things are going smoothly. So, um, just then, firstly, in your own words, Larry, I just want to know a bit about more of you and what kind of inspired you to work hard and progress to obviously now being the leader of SAHP. Um, obviously protecting and looking after the highways there. Um, well, I come from um, uh, originally DOC. Uh, I was a corrections officer there for a little while. Uh, but then when, when I heard about the SHP uh, recruiting, I decided to move over there. And, and I watched uh, a lot under, you know, Jason Meme's term. I watched what he did. I watched him grow, and I thought it was just great. Uh, I thought, you know, there could be more built on it. Uh, more things that we could do to improve. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately, Jason's term came to an end, uh, and we were greeted by Phil Roberts' term, and uh, with Phil Roberts' term came a lot of controversy, a lot of, you know, things that I didn't like, things that I thought weren't good, you know, people weren't being treated the way they should. Uh, so once, you know, everything happened with Mr. Mr. Roberts, I decided to uh, throw my hat in for the running, and I told myself and everyone that uh, would have been working under me, that if I was elected sheriff, uh, that I would be uh, the most, do my best to be the most progressive sheriff and to provide the sheriff's department and the city and state of San Andreas uh, the best possible outcome in order to provide a safer, cleaner street for those that, uh, you know, live here and those that, you know, go about daily duties here, you know, and, and that was a big thing for me. And I'm glad that, you know, as of now, uh, I can I can say that we have you know, made it cleaner. We have made it safer. Uh, we have some of the best officers, uh, you know, that you could ask for. And uh, it's because of those guys that we are as successful as we are. Okay, yeah, perfect. I'm glad to hear that. So speaking of improvements and obviously progression, um, when you obviously first took over then, so when you first became... Uh, yes, and yes, I'm just on the interview room. Sorry, bear with me. What did you feel needed the most improvements? Obviously, you did say that people could have been treated better. Was that one of the main areas, the top area that you thought you needed to work on first? Uh, yeah, I I wanted to make sure that everyone knew, uh, no matter you know what rank they were within SHP, that they knew that they could come to their higher ups if they felt something was right. Uh, because, you know, after Mr. Me term, uh, once Phil Roberts took over, it was, it was a tyrancy, really, and you couldn't go to the higher-ups without, you know, being fired for, for disagreeing with them. So I wanted everyone to know that no matter what it was, even if it was something that I did wrong, that they could come to me and that I would listen to them. Uh, and I think that's a big part of why we have sustained such high numbers, uh, why we are, you know, we have a very high morale, why everyone wants to be here and, you know, why, you know, why they come to work every day and, and have a smile on their face. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, everybody can appreciate in a workplace, you do need that communication, that teamwork. Otherwise, things don't go as smoothly as obviously you do want them to be, um, especially in the line of work as yourself. Um, that kind of communication is very important. Have you, obviously, with the comments that you've just made, so you have found that people do come to you and higher-ups and things do run a lot better 
since you've made those improvements, would you say? I do. Uh, 10 out of 10. Um, you know, we get, and I, I, you know, even the trainees, you know, we, we tell them the same thing. You know, if they feel that there could be something better, something that could be done different to make everything better for the, you know, the organization, uh, then they can come to us, and, and they have done so. And we've had people come to us. We've had people help, you know, say things that aren't the highest of ranks, but their recommendations, we have took them under consideration, we've implemented them, and I think it has created a better workplace and has created a stronger uh, SH for the future. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. That's uh, good to know. So um, within, obviously, these changes, these improvements that you were making when you first came, and, you know, obviously, as you just said, that they've proven to, you know, run a lot more smoothly. Was there any difficulties or challenging moments throughout the times where you were implementing these changes? Was there anything that was kind of, you know, spanner in the works that was a bit more of a struggle than you thought maybe once you obviously got the role? Uh, yeah, sure, no doubt. I mean, you know, no matter what you do and, and where you're doing it at, uh, there's always going to be some sort of uh, adversity that, you know, rises that you need to... Uh, you know, combat. Um, but I think the, the big reason why uh, we've been able to work through those things is because of, you know, my command, because of the employees, because, you know, they help make things easier. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't think about doing it all on your own. If you do it all on your own, you're, you're presenting yourself with a way to fail. Uh, that's why I surrounded myself with the guys that we have now, you know, the guys and the girls within the high command, within the entire uh, SHP hierarchy. Uh, and I think that's what's helped out the most, you know, get through some of the harder situations that, you know, the harder things to implement, you know, uh, some of the things that we have implemented, you know, patrol logs, uh, confiscation logs, stuff like that. Uh, you know, th those would have been hard to implement had it not been for, you know, the support staff and, and people helping out, you know, HR, or, you know, FTO, stuff like that. Helping people, you know, learn how to do those things and help them help implement those things. I think we owe a lot to the FTO and HR team. Yeah, definitely. So, um, obviously, the point proven before communication with everybody is key. And if difficulties do arise, obviously, the communication there between everybody is kind of working through that. So, yeah, that's perfect then. That's great. So, these improvements, not just for, obviously, yourselves and everybody uh, working within um, SAHP, so just as residents of Los Santos, what kind of improvements would it mean for the residents, the changes that you made? So the changes that you've made, obviously, what benefit does that have towards the residents? Right, yeah, I mean, no doubt, uh, you know, we've tried to implement things that we know could help out. Um, our goal is very simple. Uh, when I first took office, uh, I told all of my officers and those that are still arriving today that our, our our goal is to make sure that these guys, you know, they can know that they are safe within the city, they're safe on the highways. Uh, the reason we added confiscation logs uh, is to see exactly how much ammunition, how many weapons that we take off the streets on a daily basis uh, and on a weekly basis for that matter um, so that we can release those to Life Invader themselves so that Life Invader can show the citizens that we are doing our part and the best that we can in order to clean up the streets and keep those you know, illegal weapons and illegal ammunition off the streets so that they know that they can live in a safer environment and their families can also live in a safer environment. I think that's a big reason why we did the confiscation logs. You know, the big reason why we did the patrol logs is because we want people to know that our officers aren't just here collecting a paycheck. They are out there every day, you know, patrolling the roads you know, arresting the bad guys, uh, you know, right now tickets to illegally parked vehicles, you know, vehicles that could cause harm to those that are, you know, driving safely. Uh, you know, people that are speeding, they're going to get a ticket. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, the roads are the safest they can be and also the entire city. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. So, um, let's have a look. Okay, you still able to hear me? Is that all good? Oh, yeah. 
yeah perfect just double checking that so um so with obviously the answers that you was given there well obviously you do have everything logged which is perfect you're keeping um you know keeping an eye on everything you know exactly what's coming off the street you can keep track of that so coming to my next question maybe a similar answer what you've just given but kind of what values do you believe are important to protect in the communities? So obviously you do have all those logs, but in relation to, you know, the values for the city itself, you know, what is, how are you protecting the community as well as just make, keeping those logs? Uh, you know, so, you know, I, I put a big emphasis on uh, communication, a uh, big emphasis on training, uh, the proper training. Um, and another big thing is, you know, just listening to the citizens, you know, the citizens also have a voice, right? So we want to make sure that we're listening to them. We, we do, you know, maintain that they know that we are listening to them and that we're doing everything we can to help keep them safe, you know, to answer, you know, 911 calls, to, you know, to have good communication within the organization, have good, have good uh, you know, communication within other organizations and within the, the, the people of the city itself. Uh, without that, you know, you can't expect to do anything for these guys, you know, for the citizens of uh, San Andreas. And, and I'm glad that we are able to provide that and we are able to do what we need to do uh, in order to better protect them. And I think it, it really all starts with the communication. Uh, you know, I'll go back to that over and over again. Communication is key. Um, but I also I also think that the training is a big part of it, too. We need to make sure that our guys are trained properly. Uh, I'm glad that we're doing so. Uh, and I think that's another big part that's going to play into keeping the citizens uh, uh, of the state of San Andreas. Yeah, of safe. course. Yep, of course. So it's not just obviously communication regards in the guys that you're obviously working with each day in training. It's as well as, as you say, listening to the residents, making sure that the things that you are doing day by day are having that sort of effect. And obviously the residents are feeling that bit more safer each day knowing that you guys are out there doing a great job might I add um, and we all very much appreciate it and so just lastly in regarding um, obviously residents and everybody in the city is there anything else that you finally might want to add anything on your own words or anything you might just want to share with the people watching at home oh uh, yeah you know, uh, I was given uh, a second term, and my priorities are very, uh, you know, very zoned in, very, you know, you know absolute. We will uh, settle down the uh, the gangs that come up north and try to attack our citizens. Uh, they will not get away with what they've been getting away with. Uh, they gave us something. Uh, they gave us a demand where they said uh, the Bloods actually told us uh, myself and the other leaders turn ourselves in uh, or we will be hunted and those uh, that get in their way will be killed uh, I'd like everyone to know that we uh, we we put our foot down during that and uh, we made sure that they know that you know there will never be a waiver uh, we we hit them where it hurt and uh, they've been silent since so I want everyone to know that we will be taking care of these gangs uh, we will push them back to where they belong and, and they will realize that uh, legal organizations, including the SHP, uh, run the city, uh, the gangs do not. Okay, great. That's great to hear. I'm sure everybody watching it also uh, enjoy hearing what you've just had to say regarding the issue. Um, obviously, everybody knows that, you know, they it is kind of an issue going around in the city. So I'm sure everybody watching at home is going to feel um, a lot better now listening to you say that. So that's great. So if you've got nothing more to add, um, we can go ahead and obviously say thank you very much for coming and taking part in this interview. As I said at the beginning, we do realise that your time uh, is very precious for the city. You do have a lot of things to do. Um, so yeah, if you've, if that's all, Larry, we can go ahead and um, finish it up and say goodbye. If that's all right. Yeah, sounds good. I appreciate you, and I uh, appreciate everyone that's going to be watching this. And uh, Life Invader for taking the time out of their day to, uh, you know, allow me to voice, you know, everything that's been going on. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, then, Larry. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs>